Our guest today is Vineet Singhal, co-founder and executive director of Anjana Patient Education, an organization that seeks to educate people about health and diseases so that they can make their own decisions and using technology as the medium to reach them. The mission of Anjana Patient Education is to work to solve the problem and the very epidemic problem of chronic disease in America. Uh, and this is, this is a problem that has recently gotten a lot of play in the media, yeah. but not so much from the perspective of chronic disease for the underserved population. Uh, and, that, and by that I mean people who don't have health insurance and people who often visit um, what are known as free clinics. We currently operate out of Stanford. Um, that's where we are. We also have a chapter at UC Berkeley and a starting chapter at San Jose State University. Yeah. Uh, when I, it was my sophomore year in, in high school yeah. and, or in college, and I was, uh, I was thinking to myself, you know, what it is I wanted to do. And I mean, I personally lacked something that a lot of my other classmates had, which was uh, a passion, a calling. Um, and I wanted to find that for myself. Yeah. Um, and I knew that there was, there was need back home. In, in Galveston. Um, we had just been through a hurricane. There had been so many um, people who had lost their jobs, so many people who lost their health insurance that we needed, you know, people needed help. And so I decided to take a quarter off from Stanford and, and work full time at this free clinic. Mm -hmm. Just volunteer there. And I was the only full time volunteer. So my role began as, you know, just shadowing and just helping out with charts and everything, but it grew into something more meaningful for me. I mean, I started seeing patients started doing vital signs, physical exams, taking their histories, doing point of care testing, mm -hmm. and then eventually decided that I had seen so many patients, you know, go through chronic disease that I, you know, had to do something. And it wasn't just a big problem for me, you know, it was a personal problem. Because when I was, you know, when I was 18, I had been diagnosed with uh, what is known as pre-diabetes. Mm -hmm. I was 225 pounds, uh, BMI of 34, which is, you know, obese, significantly obese. Yes. Uh, and I lost, uh, over the course of two years, I had lost over 75 pounds. If our viewers want to find out more about yeah. the organization, get involved, similar to what Stanford faculty have done, where do they go? Um, the website is anjana.org, A-N-J-N-A.org. They can also help volunteer uh, for the organization. Um, there's various different opportunities, you know, translation, graphics, um, you know, spreading the word, yeah. um, contacting clinics. We have um, created this network of 250 volunteers yeah. who have devoted over, um, you know, these are not only students, they are graduate students, they are alumni, um, they are faculty mentors and, and doctors and physicians and nurses from various different places from around the world, uh, around, the, around the nation actually, who have devoted over 15,000 hours of volunteer time to three of our projects. Uh -huh. um, the first project has to do with creating health education information that is accessible and, and specifically designed for patients at free clinics. The way this project works and the way these interactive modules work is that they combine animated characters who are going through uh, a, a, a disease and they, you know, it follows the journey of that, of that character um, throughout the character's life. Yeah. Uh, interspersed with videos of actual people talking about their experience with chronic disease. And we, we call this project not alone. Uh, and this interactive module, the entire time the patient is plugged into this tablet computer, and you know, every after every single, um, you could say module, yeah. they're given a quiz, so it it tests their understanding, okay. and it you know it presents material uh, based upon that understanding. The usefulness of this technology is most apparent when you consider the time that is wasted, when every single pa when a single patient visits a clinic, especially a free clinic, they waste about three hours just you know reading Time magazine, and we believe that the time that is you know wasted essentially waiting for the physician. Yeah can be utilized for positive education uh, so that the patient is more aware about their disease and they're more inclined to ask questions of their physician when they're actually in that, in that examination room. There's already a lot of information out there mm -hmm. for patient education. I can yep. go to any of the major hospitals or government yep. clinics and there's always these brochures so lying yeah. around. I can go to Mayo Clinic website and find yep. information. So what is it that you are doing that is new, unique, and different? So we take all that information that is existing, that yeah. is out there, the Mayo Clinic, the American Heart Association, the American Diabetes Association, and we condense it, and we take the most salient facts mm -hmm. and simplify them using very simple language, yeah. uh, and we translate it into various different languages, and we use a lot of images. We have a huge team um, that is focused exclusively on translating complex medical information into images that can be understood 
working with the Vietnamese mm -hmm. population, a big problem in the Vietnamese community is high blood pressure. Yeah. And uh, a major contributor to that is Vietnamese sauce, which is an ingredient in a lot of Vietnamese food. Vietnamese sauce is extremely high in salt. Mm -hmm. but there's a recipe for Vietnamese sauce that uses a quarter of the salt uh, and uses additional spices and everything. And uh, tasty. Stays, tastes the exact same. Yeah. Making that one change can reduce the chances of someone who's Vietnamese to Remarkable. develop hypertension. Cutting down on soda from you know four, four cans a day to one can a day might be difficult at first, but if yeah. you can do it, that cuts down the amount of sugar you're, you're having uh, per day by you know, almost 50, 60 grams. Okay. Stress is a major contributor uh, to a whole host of diseases, including depression. Mm -hmm. Our focus is specifically on ensuring that patients take the right steps once they find out about their diagnosis. And you know, what's a single most important example is something as simple as taking your medication after you're diagnosed as being depressed. Okay. A lot of patients, what they do is they stop taking their medication because yeah. they feel better. And that often results in even worse outcomes for the patients. What keeps you going? You know, where, where is that inner drive coming from? Um, it's 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 my parents. I mean, they have been role models for me throughout my life. Mm -hmm. They are both physicians, and they work tirelessly for patients um, every single day. Um, and I mean, they they are they are my inspiration.